Attention all you rule breakers, you misfits and troublemakers, all you free spirits and pioneers, all you visionaries and nonconformists. Everything the establishment has told you is wrong with you is actually what's right with you. You see things others don't. You are hardwired to change the world. You are listening to the Spiritual Activist Radio Show, and I am Rahasia Uncensored where we look at the world not as it is, but as we know it can be, if and only if we have the courage to question the answers we've been given. This is our world, and it's time for us to take it back. Well, here we are again on the BBS Radio Show, and that's bbsradio.com forward slash spiritual activist. And um, I'm also on BitChute, under Rahasia Uncensored. I'm also on Rumble and it's looking like I need to spread myself around because my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Lotus Guide, gets a little precarious if I start uh, doing this thing, what's it called? Uh, telling the truth. Uh, they don't seem to like that, although they're being forced to loosen up a little bit. So that's a good thing. Uh, my last show was. Um, it's so clear. I mean, oh my God, everything is so clear. And I, and I started diving into this a little bit. <clears throat> Come to find out 30% of the people are pretty much hypnotized. This is some research that's been coming out with, from sociologists. 30% of the people are in a hypnotic trance, which explains a lot to me and helps me have some patience at the grocery store. Uh, 30% of us I include myself in this group, are, are not in a trance. For whatever reason, one reason or another, I, I venture to say it has something to do with a background in spirituality, esoteric information, psychotropic drugs, I, I think has something to do with it too, that opens up your mind, or uh, direct encounters with uh, governments and law enforcement where you see that what is happening, what's reported, isn't exactly what's going on at all. And then you start diving into the information. I tell you, really good information can make a big difference. But um, today I, I want to get into a few things. Uh, mandates, are we headed for a civil war? I, I don't even suggest you go to TikTok, but i got to show you a couple things if I have time. And Johnson and Johnson, I mean, they're, they're being sued for billions of dollars because they can't even make baby powder. And, and we're injecting the stuff that they're making uh, into our arms and saying it's probably okay. I, I really don't think so. But one of the things I'd like to do today, because in, in the research that I do for my channel, I uh, go to several people that are doing such a good job that I have a difficult time just reverberating what they're saying. That's the reason I like to play them directly, give them credit, and it also gives you a chance to check out these people. Uh, the Inspire channel is really good. Inspire channel on uh, YouTube. Uh, they've done some really good interviews. I, I hear what they're saying, uh, especially about this is the line in the sand. You can have your beliefs. You can believe anything you want to believe. Anything. I, I don't care if you're a Muslim, a Jew, a Christian, or atheist, or some weird islander kind of a mythology. I, I don't care. I don't care if you're black, yellow, green, polka dots. I don't care. But where I draw the line is when you tell me that you have the right to force me to do something to my body, especially a, an experimental something. I mean, this brings back some uh, horror shows from the Nazi era. Um, they, they have not checked out these vaccines. I don't care what they tell you. They have not, they are checking them out. They're checking them out on us. They they say that they don't know what they will do. I I, I disagree with that. I think they know exactly what they're doing. But that gets into a different show that I'm pretty sure wouldn't go up on YouTube. So I'm, I'm gonna play something here. It's from the Inspire channel. And uh, Dr. Malone, he was the inventor of the mRNA. 
technology. And he's told us from the beginning, this is not a good thing to do. And just listen to him speak out. I think it's like three minutes, you know. This is Dr. Malone. So I've become convinced that there's something here that goes beyond just vaccines and public health. And it's really, and I have not wanted to go there intellectually. And yet it is impossible to make sense out of what is transpiring in the world right now, just through as an explanation of public health and vaccine policy or, or antiviral policy. And uh, I, I have become convinced that we're in a situation in which we're all having our rights eroded and that there is a larger force beyond this. I have colleagues who, who speak at length about evil. There is a growing sense by many people that there's something fundamentally evil going on here. I, I've become convinced that we do have a situation that is essentially uh, the growth and expansion of global tyranny that is harmonized, that is managed, that is aligned across nation states. And it appears to be aligned with the economic interests of a small cluster of investment funds that re represents the bulk of global Western capital. In, in the face of a dysfunctional government and public health response, what can we do? Build connections within your local community. And that means in part, building contact lists, particularly for the elderly within your community, whether your community is a church or a town hall, whatever your political and social structure is, try to build community, try to build contact lists, call lists, stay in touch with each other, and in particular, try to stay in touch with the high-risk groups, the elders, et cetera. They represent your wisdom, and they're at highest risk. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with the idea of being globally aware of what's going on, but acting locally to start to build capabilities. And I think that that is the, you know, that is the way we break free of the mass psychosis mm -hmm. is we can get people to realize that global totalitarianism is a bigger threat than the virus. I think that's really important to remind ourselves. I, I did a show, actually I did an article too, uh, called Mass Hypnosis or Collective Insanity. And there's a lot to be said with that. Um, this has happened throughout history. This is what happens when uh, totalitarianism starts rearing its ugly head and trying to do what it has done thousands and thousands of years ago. This has been going on, off and on. And what happens is it, it usually takes like just a few people, one or two people to ignite a bunch of other people. And it starts from the ground up to dismantle the insanity. And how we do this is what we're doing right now. We're, we're communicating while we still have the ability to communicate because they want to take this away from us badly, badly. They, they do not want to engage. They don't want to do anything to do with, with uh, communication. They, they don't want to hear our side. And I've used this analogy a couple of times, but if you have two people up on the stage and one is giving you, yes, yes, this is really, really, really good for you. And the other one is saying, I don't think so. And you ask the person and saying, well, why don't you think so? And he says, well, look at all the research, look at the people. I mean, there's thousands of people dying from the injections by the CDC information. And, and that's just what they're forcing to, to tell us about. Oh, you know, you never heard about that. Oh, okay. What you need to do is turn off CNN, the most untrusted news channel on the planet. They, they've lost 70% of their viewers, and I can't even believe they still have 30%. It's amazing. Ah, I mean, Biden, it, his approval rating is super, super, super low. You know, a little over 50% people disagree with him. 
who in the hell are the 40% that agree with him? I, that just amazes me. Same thing with people in UFOs. You know, they, they say 80% of the people believe in UFOs because, well, they look up and see them flying around. But who is the 20%? Who is the 20% that thinks that we're alone in the universe and these anomalies, unidentified flying objects, are mass delusions? Or I, I, This is where it gets into mass collective insanity and, and it's I, I hate to say it about humanity but I, I'm a little uh, concerned uh, about everything right now um, I, I was accused one of my let's see I, I think it was on an email I there's 9,000 people on my email list if you ever want to join that go to lotusguide.com and over to the right there's a place where you can join uh, she emailed me and she said I was uh, promoting uh, fear, fear mongering, you know, because I, I brought up the fact that this has happened throughout history. And I tried to explain to her, well, it's not fear mongering. Once you see that the ship is going down, it's not fear mongering to tell everybody to get a life jacket. And if we don't do something really quick, we're going to lose our country. And if we lose this country, we lose the world. And totalitarianism will take over. And like the Chinese said, they want 100 years, a century of Chinese Communist Party domination on this planet. And don't think for a second that they can't do it. They're doing it. Gradually, it sort of come out all of a sudden this last couple of years, but still people don't see it. They don't believe it. You know, and I, sometimes I, I do, I get frustrated and people say, oh, well, don't get mad. I'm not mad. I, it's frustrating. It's, it'd be like at the park and I'm standing there with somebody and I say, wow, what a beautiful tree. They said, there's no tree there. What, what do you mean there's no tree there? I, I, I can see it. I can go up and touch it. it and if I run into it, it, it'll hurt. No, there's no tree there. You can't get mad at them, but it is frustrating as hell to try to communicate with people right now. Frustrating as hell. Okay, now here's another um, Inspire. I, I love these people. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to get in touch with them. I'd like to interview them and really dig down into what's, what's going on there because they're putting it on the line. Um, they, they, they do one there that uh, if I have time, I'll show you a little bit of it. But go to their channel, Inspire channel. It's really good. This one is General Flynn. Now, General Flynn, uh, yeah, I know, I know. He's a Trump supporter. Um, General Flynn has been really speaking out because he's, he's a military insider. He knows more than we do. Let me put it that way. Uh, that's probably not saying too much in today's world, but he knows a lot. And it's going to pay us to listen to people with not only like uh, Dr. Malone with a medical background, research and all the science and everything, but let's, let's listen to some people that have a military and political background and see what they're talking about. I think that what people have to understand, when you when you look at the people that are running these organizations, like the World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, the World Bank, and and you dig down a couple of layers into the into the uh, the kinds of evidence that we have now discovered about COVID and and the treatments for COVID, and you start to look at the reasons behind it, which is you know vis a vis the Great Reset. This is no longer. And they're not even talking about it being a health crisis. This is about a control mechanism in order to take over not only the United States, but the world. When I pay attention to these kinds of things and the types of agendas that they're following and the talking points that come out of them and the various topics that they talk about, and this is all about sort of a one world order that they're, that they're moving toward. And this is not a conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy. And what we have to understand is that the big take is the United States of America. 
So it's been going on for decades and they have implemented this strategy, this Great Reset strategy. So people can go read the Great Reset book. They can dig deep into the aspects of the things that are coming out of these different organizations that now, you know, bringing it from the sort of the Great Reset and the world view, bringing it into the view of the United States of America and what is happening with our ministry. Now, have you noticed, I just have to interrupt here for a second, have you noticed that so many of the people at the top levels of these organizations, whether it's the World Health Organization, NIH, the Bill Gates, all of them, have you been paying attention what's coming out of the uh, Ghislaine Maxwell case? These people were on these flights to Lolita Express. And now it's been uncovered that the Federal Aviation Agency, <clears throat> another agency, they've, they've covered up so many flights. It's ridiculous. Like uh, Bill Clinton was on 26 of those flights. He would actually signed his name, um, went over there to enjoy Pedophile Island. I mean, Jeffrey Epstein's Island. Uh, He's been on that plane way more than 26 times, way more. He wasn't just catching a ride. But the point here, Hunter, Biden, all these people, I, I think, are compromised. And at this point, we have to really at least, it, this is my frustration coming through a little bit, at least get to the point to where we can ask questions and wonder, using critical thinking, wonder, okay, if this isn't about health, which it's not, otherwise the World Health Organizations would be telling us to take vitamin C, take zinc, vitamin D3, exercise, get healthy. You know, if you're obese, lose some of that weight. That is the best thing you can do for everything. But they're not saying a word about that. Then they could go to the next level about hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, and a whole list of other things that they could use as uh, a prophylactic and to actually, if you do catch COVID-19, which I'm wondering about at this point in my life, if it even exists, something's there. Uh, what keeps me on the ball is, is I, I think they did uh, develop this in a lab. And if they did, uh, who, who's to say what what is in this? And I think the whole point was to get us to take the vaccines, uh, actually. But let's go on and listen to him a little bit more. Right now. So they are taking the COVID crisis, and I call it this COVID tyranny. It is a total assault on our Bill of Rights, top to bottom, not just our ability to be able to speak freely. And what I'm telling people now is, Go back and, and look at the Bill of Rights. They're very simple. It's a very simple document to read. Read them, and I mean read them because yeah, the okay the the first in the Bill of Rights is to give us freedom of speech, and there's a good reason why they put that first because that is the foundation of everything. If we don't have freedom of speech, they can say anything they want to say, and the moronic, collectively insane, hypnotized people will believe it. And there's no way we can tell them different. Uh, the Second Amendment is our right to bear arms. I guess that's in case the First Amendment doesn't work. We have the second one. And this is what's going on in Australia right now. If, us, if all the Australians were heavily and well armed, uh, they wouldn't be doing this. They would not be doing this especially out in the back country. This wouldn't be happening. They're rounding up Aborigines. And I've seen a commercial from Australia and they're, they're saying, yes, we are picking up Aboriginals, and but it's for their own good. And they're really, really happy that we're doing this. My God, when, when was the last time an indigenous people were happy that the government is rounding them up? They're, like I say, there's 30% of the people that they'll believe anything because they're in hypnotic trance. But 30% of us are awake enough to where we see that this is completely absurd, ridiculous. 40% are still wobbling somewhere in the middle. That's, that's the people we need to reach because 
the the thirty percent that's hypnotized, they're going to stay hypnotized till the very bitter end. And when the bitter end comes, it's going to be horrifying for them, I'm sure. And that's when they're going to need our help. That's the reason we need to wake up. We need to be strong. We need to start getting some foundations here of community. Because when this whole thing falls apart, which I believe it will, um, it, it's going to be tough out there for a lot of people. And that's when we're going to have to practice our forgiving uh, with all of these. Every single one of them is being threatened by this great reset. Every single one. Courage is a decision that you have to make. And people that wouldn't normally step up in a time of crisis are the least expected type of person. So I want people to really understand that do not fear, you know, what's in front of them and, and think about how you're going to demonstrate courage because it's a decision and people across this country have to make that decision. And I've made that decision. I, I, <clears throat> I've mentioned this before. There's a, a lot of things in life. I protested the Vietnam War. Hell no, I won't go and all that because I was going to college at the time and I was seeing what was actually going on. It was a businessman's war. Um, I wasn't going to do it, and I and I protested it. Um, if they forced me to go in, I, I would probably be living in Canada right now. I, I, I just couldn't see going over there and, and shooting farmers and burning down villages so Raytheon could make billions of dollars or whoever it was at the time. All of them, you know, VFW, Goodrich, Tires, and General Motors, all of them. They, they made tons of money on that war. I, I don't know how fervent I felt about that. I was young. Uh, but right now, at this point in my life, I, I am well-seasoned. Uh, it's a nice way to say that I'm over 70. I, I'm well-seasoned, and, and I see what's going on. It's pretty clear. It's so clear. Um, th this is one thing that we have to make a decision to do whatever it is we can. I, I'm just one guy. I'm using all of my resources possible to reach as many people as possible. And, you know, if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, you know, grab it, share it, like it, whatever it is that's down there that you can do, because it all helps. It all really helps. Uh, I need to start promoting myself better like that. And, you know, visit my channel on BBS Radio. They've been so great there. They, they allow me to say anything that I want to say because they know that I'm going to check it out and research it. And it's going to make sense with critical thinking, anybody that's looking at it. So I, I use the phrase local action has a national impact. And there's great examples out there. There's examples in Iowa. There's examples from Ohio where people stepped in to the local level and they overturned their school boards. They How about the one in Virginia? You know, th this was a governor there that said it was more than okay if you wanted to uh, identify yourself as being a female, wear a dress, you could go into the female's um, restrooms. And this, this is one guy did, and he raped uh, a young girl there. I think she was like 12 or 13, young. Could have been 14. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, and the father was really upset. And our government went to the FBI. The FBI classified him as a domestic terrorist and came real close to declaring war on parents that were speaking out about this. Well, the parents, the, the, I tell you, the one thing you don't want to do, I, I go walking in the woods every once in a while. And I know, I know, you can run across a lot of things. A mountain lion, they're more scared of me and I, than I am of them. Uh, a bear, you know, they'll run like crazy if they see a human. If you see a cub, and you even get close to that bear cub, that mother bear will move heaven and hell to get to you and rip you to little teeny pieces. So. We know, don't mess with a mother's cub. 
And that's what they did in Virginia. They started messing with the kids. And that's what they're doing all over the place now. But they took action and they voted this guy out. Uh, Biden went there to speak up for the old governor. I, I think even uh, Kamala Harris went there. I mean, that's the two worst. Oh, my God. If I was running for anything, any office, I would tell, no, 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 stay away, stay away. You know, the the new governor, I uh, forget what his name is now, it starts with a Y. He, I'm sure he consciously kept Trump away. I'm, I'm sure Trump would have went there and spoke up for him, but he probably knew. I, I don't want to identify with these polarized people right now. I just want to speak my truth and speak directly to the parents. And that's what he did, and it worked. This is what's happening now. You know, like uh, Rittenhouse, the young kid that went to um, the uh, protest. Okay. He was found not guilty. And, and I have really good friends that say, yo, he went there looking for trouble. No, he didn't. Uh, if the charges was being 17 and stupid for going to a protest, well, I, I would say, okay, yeah, he's probably guilty of that. But that wasn't a charge. The charge was murder. And when you watch everything, which the jurists did, you, you can see that uh, it was just a, a slow escalating situation. He went there with good intentions, uh, cleaning graffiti and, you know, one of the car lots asking to uh, guard his cars and stuff. And he was attacked by one guy was a pedophile. The other one was a multiple charges for violence and everything else. They attacked him, you know, but he was found not guilty. That's a good thing. Uh, it could be a slippery slope. I, I, I'll give the left that, you know, we, we have to be careful. It doesn't give us all the right to go to a protest now with a gun. Uh, this is where critical thinking as an individual comes in. And there's been several things happening now. Uh, the mandates were voted out, you know, by, by a judge. This is all good. These are all good things. Turn the town council or the mayors of their cities, because these were essentially socialists that were running these school boards. The other thing is that I look at the local newspaper and look at who owns it. You know, is it owned by, by Gannett? Is it owned by NBC? Is it owned by USA Today? And then you take it up a notch, a notch. And for a couple of decades, there's been a, a very, very big shift and an intentional move to purchase a lot of these local newspapers around the country. And you kind of go, well, why is there such a lousy article in this newspaper? And you kind of look at it and you go, what the heck? And it's because there is a concerted effort by this elite body of people that have lots of money and they have a desire to take this country over and completely do an ideological shift in this country. So back to back to local. Why has there been so much uh, visibility about school boards and school board activity around this country? You kind of say to yourself, where did these people come from? Why did school boards get like this? Part of it is, is that we have taken for granted our freedoms and we have not gotten involved. And all of a sudden we're finding out that we have these, what I call democratic socialists that are on these school boards because the education system is the way to change the entire culture of a country. This is and this has been going on for a while. There was a, I wish I had this guy's name. He was a KGB operative that uh, came to America and asked for asylum. And he gives about a 30-minute talk on YouTube. And he says exactly, 20 years ago, he, he said exactly what, what has been planned to do. First, they take over the educational system. Because if you can get one, two generations at the most, but if you can get one good generation, I think it was Ronald Reagan, we're only one generation away from losing everything. And I'm telling you, when, when I look at the kids that were born after 9-11, I mean, most of them are on TikTok doing weird, bizarre things. There's a few waking up, there's a few waking up, but they were born into an authoritarian, bizarre kind of a world to begin with, where technology reigns and everything. So you have to give them a little latitude until they start screaming at you at the top of their lungs <clears throat> it's just what somebody my age wants to to experience you know some young girl with purple hair screaming at me on how to live my life 
Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to call it, and, and you can, like I say, go to Inspire channel on YouTube. You can catch a lot of these there. But I want to move on right now because I want to get into something else before we run out of time. Okay, now I have a feeling that I might run out of time, but I need to get this part in. We've listened to the person that created the mRNA jab. We've listened to a military guy. Uh, a while back, I had dinner with Dev David Icke. My wife and I had dinner with this guy. and. Um, it, it was a mind-opening, mind-boggling conversation over dinner. I, I don't even remember what we were eating. Uh, but he was telling me things that I followed up on. And I started putting pieces together. And this is where I'm going to lose some of you. I, I already know that. But um, just bear with me and open your minds up and... Just think about this for a second. All through history, we've been we've been warned about interdimensional beings, the, the Gnostics and the Essenes talking about the Archons and the Jinn. Uh, the Christians talk about demonic spirits. Apparently, there's been people that were more conscious than you and I. That have delved into this for thousands of years and they've noticed that there is a parallel dimension of some kind it's hard to talk about it we don't have the linguistic concepts or words to really pin it down the way we should but they've been messing with our environment our humanity our dna for thousands of years and it shows up in in Christianity, it shows up as the snake. It wasn't a snake. It was a reptilian being of some kind. Um, and if you read the Urantia, the Urantia says that Eve actually had sex with the reptilian being. And that was the darker race that gets into a whole other thing. Uh, but every, every, every indigenous tribe, every religion... Uh, the Hindus, all of them, they have these ancient, ancient stories. And some of them are just mytho mythological stories, but they all talk about the same thing. Quetzalcoatl, Mexico, that god, it, it's feathered serpent. Uh, the first emperor of China was a woman, a human woman, that mated with a dragon, a reptilian. And that was the first emperor. And this gets into the bloodlines and all of that. There's, there's enough information where even a simple-minded person uh, would have to go, hmm, well, this, is, this is sort of interesting. And I've talked to people like Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden, and they've given me all the genetic information. You know, Greg Braden was telling me that, and I, that interview is on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Lotus Guide. He was telling me that the reason we have 46 chromosomes, we used to have 48, like primates, but they know now that four of those chromosomes were taken apart and spliced together. The telomeres were taken off the ends, they were spliced together, and anything that was redundant was switched off, and that brought us down to 46 chromosomes. That could only have been done in a lab but we're just now possibly getting close to being able to do things like that. They might even be doing it, just not telling us about it. But David Icke gets into this a little bit, and I, and I think we have to factor this in. Uh, when you start looking at the demonic behavior of these people, especially regarding children, and um, realize that one of the number one money-making uh, things going on on the planet right now is human trafficking and sex slavery with children. I mean, this is where we all should be drawing the line, it seems to me. I mean, aren't we supposed, as adults, aren't we supposed to be watching out for the children? And we're not, we're not. We're, we're putting politics and money and convenience and our lethargic, apathetic, blah, blah, blah first and not really looking into this. I, I've watched movies like The Whistleblower, 
this woman, she used to be a cop. She went and she found out the United Nations and all Red Cross, all these people, they're like part of the human trafficking. They just recently asked uh, Elon Musk, the I think it was the World Health Organization. They said, look, we could solve world hunger if we had $6 billion. Basically, was, they were asking him for money. He says, sure, I'll sell some of my... Uh, Tesla stock tomorrow. Show me how six billion dollars is going to solve world hunger. Basically, it's going to buy everybody on the planet a fish dinner for one day. I mean, that's that it's not going to solve, and they couldn't do it. But he says, even if you show me six billion dollars can solve world hunger, you have to do something first. We have to talk about the United Nations and human trafficking. This is what it takes, really wealthy, powerful people speaking up and speaking out and putting their money where their mouth is, because he would. He'd, he'd put up billions of dollars if it would solve the problem, but he knows as well as I do. It would just go to the administrative cost and, blah, 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 and on and on it goes. It wouldn't solve anything the way they're thinking about doing it. I doubt it if they even have a plan. They don't want to solve world hunger. Not at that level. That's part of the plan, depopulation. Oh, boy, I tell you, it is, I never thought I would be in this kind of a situation in life. When I started doing my podcast, I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. You know, we can talk about UFOs. We can talk about spirituality and meditation and consciousness. And then all this nonsense happened. And I, I find myself talking about all this stuff. I don't want to talk about it, but we have to. We, we cannot let this go on. We, we have to draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough. No fucking more. This is it. I will not back down. I will not back away. I will not submit. I will not give up. I will not. And, and we all, if we all do that, the whole thing falls apart because, let's face it, <laughs> we all know what's been going on for many, many years. These people are crooks, they're criminals, they're pedophiles, they're rapists, they're, they're the, the scourge of the, most of the people in government, I would not let them watch my dog. I, I wouldn't trust them. Biden, I wouldn't let him try to balance my checkbook. And what is he doing? He's printing up trillions of dollars because he's got it all figured out? I don't think so. This is where we have to be honest with ourselves and realize these people are either super stupid, I mean, which is somewhat possible, or they're compromised in trying to take this country down. I think that's where I'm at at this point. I, I think Biden and Hunter Biden, I think they're compromised as hell. That, that laptop from hell, I mean, I've seen, I've seen just a few of the pictures that have been leaked out from that. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. And then when I hear the conspiracy theories at this point about it, I, I tend to believe them. I mean, the little Chinese girls and everything over there when he was in China, staying at a, uh, a really nice hotel that the government paid for. Uh, you think they didn't have video cameras in there? I, if you don't think they had video cameras, then I have to put you in the stupid file because uh, I know they had to have video. So if they had video of Hunter in there, who's to know what he was, his dad was doing over there? Why are they so compromised that they, they will blatantly lie in our face? I don't know. Well, this might take you over the top a little bit, but so be it. I, I'll probably stop it before it gets to the end. It's 13 minutes. But uh, David Icke is he's something else. And like I say, uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Inspired Channel. Over the decades, I, I've gone deeper and deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole. And the deeper you go, the simpler it gets. Because higher up the rabbit hole, and everything's moving, organizations, people, and networks, and they get a bit lower. And you, you move into uh, you know the wider perspective of it all, what's what's behind all this 
manipulation, what's behind. But even more, what is this place? Mm. Who are we? Where are we? Why are we here? And you keep going deeper. And you, you come into the, the non-human element of it all and what have you. But then, but then you hit the point where it all comes out of. And it's real simple. Perception comes from your state of consciousness. I'm going to stop it right there just for a second. Um, I, I've read some CIA paperwork that came out in 2004. Apparently, they, they have either found or manufactured a portal to this other dimension. And this is what they've released through the Freedom of Information Act. They have been going through these portals trying to change the timeline. These things are real, and our government is deeply involved in changing our perception through changing our consciousness. And perception becomes behavior. And collective behavior is what we call human society. So if you follow back from human society and all the stuff that goes on, you go through perception, or you go through behavior, you go through perception, and then you go through to consciousness. So what is driving people is their state of consciousness. And so uh, when you go really uh, deep in the rabbit hole, you realize that, you know, you can talk, and I do, and I've done a great length over the years, about networks of manipulation and satanic groups and secret societies. You do all that. And it needs doing. Of course it does. So we know what's going on. But in the end, what's driving the secret society networks that I call the global cult that's behind the dystopian agendas is their state of consciousness. Those who are awakening and seeing it are awakening and seeing it because of their state of consciousness. And people are not seeing it because of their state of consciousness. These are the people that are in a hypnotic trance. As much as I would like to continue listening to this, you, you can listen to it on the Inspire channel. Uh, it's really worth listening to because it gets into the off-planet interdimensional beings. and <clears throat> But you have to listen to the whole thing and you have to really, in a Heinleinian sense, grok it uh, and to really feel it. Because intellectually, it doesn't make any sense to people that's hearing it for the first time. But I, I want to... Um, I want, to, I want to play something else for you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to bring us back down to earth a little bit here. This is Max Egan. I, I interviewed him a while back just before he uh, left, escaped from uh, Australia. They, he, they locked up his bank accounts now. They gave him a little bit of time to get his money out, but he's not allowed to do any banking there now. He's, um, I'm going to interview him again here pretty soon. Um, he, he has a nice calming way of talking, even about things that are pretty intense. But things are pretty intense right now. Uh, like I say, if, if the Titanic's going down, it, it's not fear-mongering to say, hey, you know, uh, you have a life jacket, uh, you might need it. You know, stop complaining about the coffee not being hot. Uh, here's Max Egan. And get ready for the big storm because it is coming, folks. You know, you, you've got to really be prepared for this. And I think we're going to get through it, but I think it's just going to be a process. It's going to get a livelier yet, but there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just up to you to stay strong and stay focused through this period. And again, a lot of people write to me and say, well, what about my son? What about my daughter? What about my siblings? And these are good questions, but you know, ultimately it's a personal soul choice for every single individual through this time. You, know, you do what you can for those around you, but you also do what you can for you. And no matter what you do for others, it's still going to come to that point where they've got to make that soul choice, and they're the only ones who can make that choice. So this is a time when everybody needs to find their own personal strength, their own personal individuality, believing themselves. 
to realize, I mean, sure, we're all one, we're all connected, but at the same time, we are completely alone, we're completely individual. You know, we are, it's, it's a separate experience for each one of us, you know. So, you've got to be prepared for that. You know, I do what I can to help people around me, to help others. I mean, it's, that's why I do this, that's why I do what I do, just to try to help the world wake up to themselves. But ultimately, when it comes to that moment, it's my choice. It's my sole choice. And no matter what information I've imparted to other people, when it comes to that moment, it's their sole choice. I can't make that decision for them. You know, you can only help people so far. People have to be able to help themselves. You know, sometimes I think people even come into the matrix in order to provide you with a situation where you'll be given a choice as to whether to be selfish, whether to be compassionate, whether to put yourself before others, whether to put yourself on an even keel with others, whether to, I mean, there's so many different aspects of life. And I think there's certain things coming, coming to play. I mean, imagine if, you know, the whole concept of non-playing characters and stuff like this. You know, people that just come in there, like when you're playing in a game and there's certain individuals you interact with in the game which create the scenario for you to go on and improve yourself with. I think it's like that for everybody. So you've got to understand it is an individual thing. So you can only do what you can for others. Ultimately, it's going to come down to them making that sole choice when the time comes for them to make it. Stay strong through this, folks, and keep your focus on you know, where it should be. Try not to you know, move into hatred. It's really important that we don't do that. I mean, I've said so many times, if people simply respected others, we could change the world in a day. If people realize that there's only really two emotions, love and fear, and that everything we do needs to be centered in love. You know, if we could do that, if we could just let down these barriers that people have with each other, we could literally change the world in a day. And even with all the stuff that's going on, all these, you know, I mean, like I said, they're programmed. You can't hold it against them. You can't hate them. <laughs> and I get angry as well. I, I, I do. I get really angry sometimes. Right? I get angry too. And, I, and I'm, I'm really trying to watch that. And it really helps to, uh, I've been listening to Sad Guru. I've been listening to people that talk a little more mellow, Bruce Lipton. It, it helps me to balance out some of the insanity that I, it's almost necessary to know what the darkness is so you can sort of fight against it. It's expressive. But you know, we can't become that which we're fighting. It's really important that we don't do that. It's really important that we keep our hearts centered because that's what's ultimately going to bring us through. And if we can center our hearts in the right energy to begin with, we wouldn't have to do anything else. We could literally change the world in a day. It's very hard to live in a state of empathy in a society that's based on monetary gain. This is why money is used. This is why material wealth and class and social division is used. All of the tools that they use are used to divide us. Every single thing that is in place, the education system, all of it, everything, this entire structure of this society is designed to divide this consciousness, to divide the people amongst themselves, to remove the power of the goddess energy from the females, to turn the female energy into something that is either subservient or an object of lust, to allow the growth of male dominating energy in this world which is simply polarized there's nothing wrong with male energy as long as it's balanced with female energy but at the moment the planet is polarized it's all been done by design this has all been orchestrated the entire thing and it's a game folks it's a game of free will the choice is ours and we can make that choice anytime we want all we have to do is look around us connect to the field, connect to each other. And all the science is now in. Everything's there. All the research is available. It's all in the public domain. Anybody who wants to go and research everything that I've said, 
you can go and find out that all of this is true. This is important. Um, I can't tell you how many people come to me. How do you know all this? Because the research is out there that most of the stuff, uh, things like Alex Jones, he doesn't, he's really opinionated in one sense, but his opinions are coming directly off of their paperwork. He's reading their plans when he comes up with these conspiracy theories. It's, it's their paperwork that he's going off of. Do your research. Because if you just sit here and listen to people like me, just go, oh, that was interesting. It doesn't do you any good. It's like being starved out of your mind and going to a restaurant and they give you a menu and tell you goodbye. You have to eat. You have to digest this stuff. And you can take it or leave it. You can just look at all of this as the demented ravings of an aging buffoon. And you can disregard it altogether. Just think nothing of it. Or perhaps you can stop and look within yourself and then look within others and find the beauty that is there. Find the joy that's there. Find the connection that's there. It's a wonderful thing, folks. And it's right there at your fingertips because unconditional love, people say unconditional love, you'll never achieve unconditional love. No one that isn't of the Creator, no one that isn't blessed with the Spirit of the Heavenly Father can never have unconditional love. Well, everybody can have unconditional love because what makes up this matrix, what makes up this entire reality, the very fabric, the compassion, the fabric that makes up this world is made entirely of unconditional love because that's all there is. Everything else is completely illusionary. Understand the power that you've got to realize this in your own life and understand the power that you have to affect change in this world. We can make this reality anything we want or we can simply create a unity and return to self. And wouldn't that be wonderful? To me, that is what 2012 is about. That's what this whole mind end date whatever you want to call it, is all about. Every 26,000 years, there's a rise in the human cavity resonance. As that resonance rises, so does everything else rise with it. The frequency of everything. It's all connected. Each time this happens, this consciousness goes to a new level. There have been certain forces at work here to help this consciousness return to self. All the negative stuff that's been happening in the world, it's all been happening for a reason, folks. If this negative stuff wasn't happening, the awakening that we are experiencing among a great number of people on this planet would not be occurring. This is another thing I have to bring up. I, <clears throat> I'm, I wrote a book called To Believe or Not to Believe, The Social and Neurological Consequences of Belief Systems. So I'm not exactly what you'd call a religious person, but I, I, with all of this happening and the more I'm delving into it, I'm becoming a little more religious by default, which I think is the best way to become religious. You shouldn't get a young kid and hammer it into his head. Uh, it didn't work with me, obviously. but. Um, I, I think you should find God, find the truth uh, through searching and through experience. And the experiences that I've had lately is telling me that you know, there's something to this. When I, when I read some of the Vedic literature, the Upanishads, and read some of the biblical uh, literature, uh, Hindu, the Mesopotamian culture, the Sumerian tablets, they're all saying the same thing, that we've had this same problem throughout history, throughout history. This negativity is required in order for the consciousness to ascend. Everything is exactly the way it should be. And the choice of whether you wish to return to self or to stay in this reality is up to you. 
all you have to do to return to self is to understand the true nature of this reality and understand that there really is only one. Because with that understanding, truly does come a state of unconditional love. Once you know the truth, it's it's hard to be any other way. Look at the shadow self, folks. Understand who you are. Look at the shadows that are in this world and fix them. <clears throat> By facing the shadow in yourself, you can face the shadows in this world. And by facing the shadows in this world, you can truly face the shadow within yourself. I want to finish the show today with, well, you might call it a poem. It's more of an anecdote written by a lady called Araya Mountain Dreamer. It was written in 1994. It's called The Invitation. And it goes like this. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dreams, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the centre of your own sorrow, if you have been open to life's betrayals, or have become closed from the fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it, or fade it, or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with wildness and let ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, be realistic, or to remember the limitations of being human. I'm going to cut it off there. We're running out of time. <clears throat> I just, uh, this is sort of funny. I, I got a return from the government uh, for one dollar. Uh, it cost them more than that to probably print it up and send it. <clears throat> at least we're getting money back. Well, I want to thank you for joining us, and um, I, I hope this brings some level of awareness, uh, enlightenment, understanding. And all I can say is, if you're watching CNN, MSNBC, or any of the network, turn it off. They're just lying to us. Um, I suggest some people don't like Fox News, and yeah, they they're a little bit biased too. But Tucker Carlson, I he's he's putting it all on the line. I, I think he's worth listening to. Um, Glenn Beck, he's really good. Uh, ben Shapiro, I mean, he, can, he talks like a machine gun. This kid is quick, you know. It, it's the way his mind is. His mind is really quick. I enjoy listening to somebody that's. A lot more intelligent than I am. I can learn a lot from him. Um, Dave Rubin, the Dave Rubin report, he's really good. Um, there's a lot of things out there. And, and once you go on YouTube and you start plugging these in, the algorithm will start bringing you more and more and more of that kind of thing. Uh, I made the mistake of going on there and looking for a couple of TikToks just to see. Oh my God. You don't even want to know. I, <laughs> uh, when I see the, the the kids out there on TikTok, when I say kids, I mean 20, 25 year olds. Um, it, it makes it it's a little scary uh, to think that they're going to be in charge someday. They won't be able to be in charge. Well, on that note. Um, I'm here on uh, BBS Radio every other Saturday at 6 o'clock. And if you want to make a donation to my show, you can always visit lotusguide.com forward slash donations. There's a link there. It's all secure through PayPal. Uh, donations come in handy. I, I'm terrible at asking for donations, and I, I should more because I, I don't advertise or anything. And uh, obviously, we can all use that little bit of help because I don't have George Soros uh, giving me money for obvious reasons. 
Um, so thank you very much. And thanks for your time. Very much appreciate everybody's time because it's really valuable. Uh, do your research. Thank you.